the day the ease of motion fades. They call it frozen shoulder. Let's start with the shoulder, an incredible structure designed for mobility. At its center is the glenohumeral joint, where the round head of the humerus meets the shallow socket of the scapula. But what keeps these two bones together while allowing such an extraordinary range of motion? This is where the joint capsule steps in. A thin elastic sheath that envelops the joint. Not only does it hold the bones together, but also creates the space that defines the joint itself. And inside, Sinoial fluid keeps everything moving smoothly, like oil in a finely tuned machine. But what happens if the joint capsule thickens and loses its natural elasticity? It becomes rigid, leaving less room for the bones to glide smoothly. This rigidity restricts the movements of the humeral head within the socket. Movements like abduction become limited reducing the range of motion. Now, what if this stiff capsule wasn't just rigid, but also inflamed? Inflammation amplifies the problem. Every movement becomes more painful, and it adds to the rigidity and stiffness of the capsule, making even small motions agonizing. So this is what happens in frozen shoulder. The joint capsule becomes inflamed, thickened, and stiff. This combination worsens movement. Every attempt becomes painful, while the increased stiffness adds to the restriction. Frozen shoulder progresses through three stages. Freezing, frozen, and thawing. Freezing stage. In this initial stage, the capsule thickens and becomes inflamed. Pain is the dominant issue and even small movements can feel excruciating. Frozen stage. As the pain begins to subside, the joint capsule grows even thicker and stiffer. Stiffness now becomes the main challenge, severely limiting your shoulder's movement. Finally, the thawing stage begins. The capsule gradually loosens, stiffness decreases, and movement improves but full recovery takes time. These stages follow a general timeline. The freezing stage typically lasts for six weeks to nine months. The frozen stage lasts four to six months, and the thawing stage can take anywhere from six months to two years. But it's important to note that these stages aren't completely separate from one another. A patient might experience overlapping symptoms, and it's not always possible to pinpoint exactly which stage they are in. Frozen shoulder doesn't always have a clear cause, but certain factors can increase your risk. It often develops after an injury, surgery, or prolonged immobility, like keeping your arm in a sling for too long. These situations reduce the joint's movement, leading to stiffness over time. Underlying medical conditions can also play a role. Diabetes, for example, doubles the risk of developing frozen shoulder, and hormonal changes like those during menopause may make women more susceptible. Other conditions like thyroid disorders or cardiovascular disease are also linked to this condition. Age is another factor. Frozen shoulder tends to strike between the ages of 40 to 60, and it's more common in women than in men. While it's not fully understood why, these risk factors give us clues about who might be more vulnerable. Treatment of frozen shoulder involves many details, especially when it comes to how each treatment affects the joint capsule, or more specifically, the tight inflamed capsule. We'll dive into that in another video. But briefly, conservative treatments like physical therapy anti-inflammatory medications and corticosteroid injections are usually effective. These treatments often help improve range of motion, reduce pain, and lead to significant improvement. 
But what if these treatments aren't enough? 